All right, honors chemistry. This is um, the answers video for lesson 27 on basic acid base. So the um, first question is um, define and compare the Arrhenius and Bronsted Lowry definition of an acid. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and uncover these answers that have already been written. Um, so both define an acid as a proton donor. So where does that proton come from? The proton is the nucleus of a hydrogen atom on the acid molecule, and it's symbolized by H+. So that would be a hydrogen is a proton and an electron. If only the proton, uh, if only the proton travels to the um, to the base or to the water molecule, then it's simply an H+ ion. That when it gets onto the water molecule, it turns an H2O molecule into an H3O+. It has an extra hydrogen ion on it, a hyd hydrogen ion, but it does not have the electron of the hydrogen, so therefore it's positively charged. All right, so define and compare an Arrhenius and Bronsted-Lowry definition of a base. Okay, so... Um, an Arrhenius base contains an OH. The base actually has, you will actually see the letters OH on it, which it leaves in the solution as a hydroxide ion. Okay, so OH minus. So an example of that would be NaOH, sodium hydroxide. That's a strong base. Okay, a Bronsted-Lowry base, cre create, base creates an OH minus by accepting... by accepting a proton from an H2O molecule. So in other words, it breaks a water molecule. This water molecule gives up a proton, one of its hydrogens, but not the electron. So that jumps over to the base. So in the case of NH3, it would become NH4. What's left behind is that broken water molecule, which is now an OH-. When you take a proton away from a water molecule, you end up with an OH-. One, de one thing that all bases have in common is they produce OH- in the solution. They just do it differently. Arrhenius, the base actually has an OH with it. With Bronsted-Lowry, the base breaks a water molecule, takes the proton away from the water molecule, and leaves an OH- behind. Okay, describe what compounds must be in solution for the solution to be considered acidic. Okay, so the answer to that is it has to have hydronium ions. That's the definition of an acid. It produces hydronium ions in solution. And hydronium ions can either be symbolized as just the proton or as the proton attached to a water molecule, which becomes an H3O+. This is really a more accurate representation of what it is. This is really just kind of a shorthand, but in, in acid-base chemistry, these two both mean the same thing, and they're hydronium ions, and that's what defines an acid. It must produce hydronium ions in the solution. For a base, they must, as we said earlier, produce hydroxide, OH-, either by leaving an OH in the solution or by breaking a water molecule, pulling the proton away from it, and leaving an OH-, and that's called a hydroxide ion. Okay, using a basic diagram, explain what happens in a Bronsted-Lowry uh, acid reaction. Okay, and this could... Uh, okay, and it says including what happens to the hydrogen atom involved. Okay, so this is hydrochloric acid, and when it forms a covalent bond, this is all illustrated by the way on the instruction video, when it forms a covalent bond with a chlorine atom, the, hy the um, hydrogen atom contributes an electron, it shares an electron with chlorine, and chlorine shares an electron with the hydrogen, and that creates a covalent bond. That's a shared electron situation. Whenever a water molecule is present with a, this is, would be a strong acid, what happens is the lone pair electrons on the water molecule, there's two lone pairs, but one of them will attract just the proton of that hydrogen atom. It won't attract the electron. The electron will be left behind. So the proton of that hydrogen atom will jump over to that lone pair, that 
So in other words, that hydrogen, that proton from that hydrogen atom has more of an attraction to that lone pair of electrons on the water than it does to its own chlorine that it was attached to originally. And so that's just an H plus. It's not the entire hydrogen atom. Uh, it is a hydrogen atom because the proton is what defines the atom. So that's the interesting thing. It's considered to be a hydrogen atom because it, it's the proton from a hydrogen atom, but it left the electron behind. So it's an H plus. It's a positively charged hydrogen atom or a hydrogen ion. So what you have there then is an H3O. And since it has that extra proton, it really that just was just the proton that came over, it becomes H3O plus, and that's the hydronium ion. Okay, let's go here. Okay, explain why both H plus and H3O plus are used to represent hydronium. Okay, so we'll do that. So because H plus does not exist alone in solution, the H plus ion immediately attaches to an H2O to become H3O plus. So this really doesn't go floating around in the solution like this and find a water molecule. Really the water molecule is right up against it right there and it just general basically it's passed over real quickly from this hydrochloric acid to this water molecule. So you don't find loose H plus ions this floating around. They immediately jump from here. I mean just instantaneously just immediately jump from here to here. They're, they're just passed right over to form hydronium. So this is really a shorthand. <clears throat> um, this is really a shorthand way of writing an H3O plus, but we in this class will generally use H3O plus to represent hydronium ions, but you will see exceptions. Okay, next. Write the two ways a reaction of HCl and water can be represented and identify which is preferred, the preferred representation on the AP exam. So this is a carryover question from the AP class. So the first way is this. You have hydrochloric acid, you put it in water. So you actually show the water as part of the reaction. And in fact, it is part of the reaction. So HCl plus H2O, this hydrogen is going to jump from the hydrochloric acid over to the water molecule right there. So that's going to create H3O plus and the water molecule is going to turn into a hydronium ion. And this is the chloride where the proton left but left its electron behind and therefore you have a chloride ion. You have a Cl minus ion there. So that's the preferred way to do it. To actually, Because water is actually part of the chemical reaction here. You have a water molecule and now over here it's not a water molecule anymore it's turned into a hydronium in many chemical reactions water just just serves to dissolve something like when it dissolves sodium chloride then it's really not part of the reaction it's just dissolving something but here it's actually changing from a water molecule into a hydronium but the shorthand rep representation for this and again this is not preferred but it's a valid representation is you have the HCl aqueous, that means it's in water. And what it produces is the hydronium ion aqueous, which implies it's going to jump onto a water molecule, and the chloride ion aqueous, meaning it's in a water solution. So this is kind of a shorthand way to do it, but it's not the preferred way. The top equation is the preferred way. Okay, write a dissociation reaction for formic acid, HCOOH, and you don't have to do the generic form. We didn't do that in this class, and you don't have to do that. So you notice how they write the H's separately. They could have written this as H2COO, but they didn't. They wrote it as H and then an H there, and that's because this H is the acid H. It's the proton that's going to leave the formic acid. Formic acid's a weak acid, so it won't do it very often. Um, most of the formic acid in water will stay like this. It won't change. But some of them, this H, will jump over to a water molecule. So the way you would write that is right here. Okay, so there's the formic acid. This H is going to jump over to the water molecule. So the water molecule is going to become a hydronium, H3O+. And then this loses that H right there, but not the electron. The electron stays behind. Only the proton jumped over there. So it becomes COOH, the rest of this. And then the negative sign represents the electron that was left behind. It has a negative charge. So this is the way acid reactions work. So in the next question, 
you're going to do the same thing. This one's nitric acid. Now this is a strong acid. This is a strong acid. So 100% of the time when you put nitric acid in water, this hydrogen is going to break away. The proton's going to break away and jump onto the water molecule. So that's this is written in this fashion. HNO3, nitric acid, in water. The hydrogen's going to jump over to the water molecule, form a hydronium ion. Again, that's always what defines an acid. Acids always produce hydronium ions in water solution. And then the rest of this molecule is going to be left behind. So that's the NO3 and that and it also left its electron behind as well. So that's an NO3 minus. So you'll notice the similarity between these two reactions. You can't tell by the way the reactions are written that this is a weak acid and only some of these will dissociate and this is a strong acid. All of these H's will dissociate in water 100% of them. Um, but Anyway, they, they, both acid reactions are written the same way. Okay, so um, uh, that is the end of the part one of this video. I'm going to go ahead and pick up part two on uh, the next video.